Hi, before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know that I am running a free live online class this weekend and I would love for you to be there if it sounds like it's your cup of tea. So it's called the four things singers do that could be messing with your breath support. Now breath support is one of those things that a lot of advanced singers kind of roll their eyes at and they think I don't need to keep covering this. I know what I'm doing. I know how to sing from the diaphragm. But trust me, I thought that I knew what I was doing when I was a young singer and the more that I work on my breath support, the more that I learn and the more that science is uncovering about it, the easier it is for me to sing. I'm, I'm just finding that it's so much more efficient. I get a lot more sound, a lot more bang for my buck without as much effort. So if you find that you're getting a tickle in your throat when you're going up to high notes, or you're finding that you don't have as much resonance, you're not feeling grounded in your body when you're trying to project, or you're getting a squeezing of the throat when you're trying to belt, um, any of these things, this is why you might need to work on your breath support. The other thing that I used to do was really yank my abdominal muscles in really tight and grip them to get more volume. So if any of this sounds like you or you would just like to connect with me live and ask as many questions as you have around this topic, I would love to see you. So I've included a link to sign up to make sure that you get your invite in the description. And if you can't make it live, there will be a replay that you can watch so nobody misses out. And because this is held online, you can do it from anywhere in the world with an internet connection, which you obviously have because you are watching me on YouTube. So I hope to see you then. Make sure that you sign up. Hi, I'm Kim and you can find me over at inspiredtosing.com and today I'm going to be sharing my three favorite exercises to increase your range. We're really focusing on increasing it on the way up, but all of these exercises are also useful on the way down, apart from maybe the last one. It's pretty specific to the head voice there. So the thing is that we want to really work with creating efficiency in the body. We want to make sure that we're utilizing the breath correctly. We want to make sure that everything is nice and relaxed with the vocal cords working efficiently and also the throat and neck muscles not engaging to push any sound out. So I will say that all of these exercises, we need to be aware of what's going on with the breath. We need to make sure that we are inhaling low, not expanding high into the chest and that our abdominal muscles are flexible. We're keeping flexibility in the torso there. So when you're doing any warm up exercises, I want you to really have a focus on what you're doing so that you are embedding good habits. You're creating good habits versus just pushing through and being okay with a little bit of tension coming in. We want to eliminate the tension. That is the whole point here. So let's get into these exercises. I'm going to be demonstrating the first two on a full octave scale, but you can use any scale pattern that you like. And I have got some that you can download. I'm just putting a link in here so that you can get a few of your very own to play with. So the first one that we're going to do is the lip trills and tongue rolls, or you might call them something slightly different, but we've got the with the lips, keeping them nice and relaxed, blowing that air through and and I find that just doing that um, sound on a nice low note to start off with is really, really useful. And people do find one easier than the other. If they are both really difficult for you, don't worry. We have got two more exercises to go, so don't stress. But we're going to do this one on a full octave. So the lip trill first. Again, I'm really keeping focused on what is going on with my breathing and how flexible I can keep the torso here. So. And I'm letting the voice lighten off so that I can transition chest voice, mixed voice up into the head voice. You are not trying to keep power. You are not trying to keep the resonance lower in your chest voice. Let it go up. We're trying to allow it to do what it wants to do. Allow the cords to stretch for you. So the other one is that and we're going to go up a little bit higher with this same thing. Rrrr. 
Notice how relaxed I am in the jaw and the lips. And just letting the abdominals come in, letting that stomach come in as I'm getting rid of my air. So I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see that happening. So it starts inflated and then moves back to normal. I like to say inhale, feels like I've eaten three burgers and then as I'm exhaling, it's moving back to what feels a little bit more normal for me. Okay, so those are the lip trills and the tongue rolls. As I said, you can do them on any pattern that you like. That was just the full octave as a demonstration. The next one is puffed out cheeks and it's gonna look ridiculous, but I hope that by this stage in your singing journey, you kind of get the idea that we do some weird things to get the results that we're after, right? The great thing about these exercises, these semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, is that they really work on balancing the pressure in the body, the air pressure in the body. So they should feel like you can do them in a nice relaxed way. They're also great in blending between the registers. So if you have any really big hiccups in the, the, the gear switches between your chest voice and your head voice, these can be really useful exercises to start to iron that out as well. So this is the puffy cheek exercise, and I'm gonna get you just to blow out air to start off with. So we're really closing our mouth. There's this tiny, tiny little opening there. And again, I can feel what's going on in terms of the blowing really being led by this movement in my torso versus a pushing from the throat. So check that the inhale is low, and then check that you're really feeling this flexible movement here to blow the air out. Now we're gonna do it on a note, same thing. And then you're gonna do it on exercise. We're gonna do it on the full octave again. And because this is such a bizarre sound, I can't judge the sound of the note. So, so often when we're trying to increase our range, we want the sound to be perfect. We have an idea of what we want in our heads. And in some ways that leads us to hold back or push harder or really grip onto control of those notes. So this is helping you really pay attention more to what it feels like, what is going on in the body and creating that deep practice focus so that you can really train the body to do what you would like it to do efficiently and with out throat tension and really ignoring what sounds are coming out of your mouth. You wanna listen for any like stops and starts or feel for any tension, but the quality of the note, we can't really get an idea of whether it's good or bad, right? So that's another reason that I love these exercises is that they're just sounds. So we're not judging it needing to be perfect. We're not trying so hard or shying away when it doesn't sound good. The last exercise that we're going to do is much more specific to the head voice. And we are going to be calling out with some excited sort of sireny sounds. You might've used sirens before. This is much more like an excited call sound. And I tend to do it on one note at a time. I sort of climb up one note at a time. And it sounds a little bit like this. I'm gonna to try to edit the, the mic so that it's not quite so loud in post-production, but again, really feeling that you're inhaling low rather than as soon as we inhale high, it's gonna be a real struggle to get that freer sound. Woo! 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 And again, I'm, I've got quite a bit of movement going on here. I'm not yanking the abdominal muscles, but I'm allowing the belly to come in. Woo! So it feels a little bit like the way that it feels when you cough. And I've got, ex I've got videos on breath support that you can check out. I will link to them above, just so that you know what I'm talking about with this abdominal flexibility. But if you already know what I'm talking about, you're good to go. 
So with this exercise, we're really thinking about calling, really use that high intensity, call it out. If you're shrinking away and holding back because you're worried what your neighbors will think or your roommates or your family, this is gonna be really difficult. So that's one thing that I will say about expanding your range is that you might be finding it difficult because you're trying to stay quiet, you're trying to hold back that intensity. Um, and we do need quite a lot of energy to get up higher to those notes. So just keep that in mind. As we go higher, we need to open up the space of the mouth a little bit more. So woo, I can keep quite small and then woo, woo, I need to really open up a little bit more. So as you go higher, just notice if you're feeling like you need a little bit more space, Pay attention to what it feels like if you do drop the jaw a little bit more. You are in charge of experimenting, um, but you can always ask me questions here as well. So I hope that you found those useful. If you did, please share this video with your singing friends, spread it far and wide so that everyone can increase their range and increase their range really gently using exercises that are really about balance in the body, creating balance with those pressures and also sort of switching off our judgmental mind and it needing to sound a certain way so that we can train the body to be much more efficient for it to be a lot easier for us to get up there um, as always it has been so wonderful seeing you here and leave a comment or question below if you have one otherwise i will see you next time